few sannyasis in front of Srila Prabhupada Samadhi. <clears throat> I was very interested in that Srila Prabhupada's appearance to this world was well known to Lord Krishna, who decided him to come in Brahma Bhavivurta Puran 5,000 years back when the, all the holy places in India, all the holy rivers headed by Mother Ganges, had a big discussion and then they all sent to Mother Ganga Devi, to Lord Krishna, that in this Kali Yuga, we may be here in this world, but actually because we are adapted to the culture of degraded society, it does not bother us. 5,000 years back, when Sutta Goswami was speaking to 88,000 sages, they heard only one word that the cow will be slaughtered. Just that hearing this, they fainted. They don't want to see that day. And <laughs> I go to big you know, publics or supermarket, you see the cow meat, I mean, you pass by, what can you do to buy things for the temple? But then I reflect, how come it doesn't affect me? I mean, I understand it is sinful, I hear, but I'm not feeling fainted, you know, that it's such a degraded. Because we kind of like grow up and adapted the degradation so it does not affect so much. <clears throat> so when the holy places and holy rivers, they knew when Krishna was present in this world, what a beautiful culture. Everybody was some way or other, directly or indirectly, thinking of Krishna. But because it will be disappearing, so they all had a meeting and they sent Ganga Devi to approach Lord Krishna with this petition that uh, they want to disappear. Uh, because in Kali Yuga people will have lazy, laziness of spiritual life which Prabhupada also said to the reporter when the reporter asked, what do you think about American culture? And Prabhupada said, you are okay, I am okay, death is coming, let's not talk about it. <laughs> so I think like, oh, Prabhupada knew already. The American culture is like lazy, spiritually lazy, it's true. Uh, people are nice, but they are not interested to make a commitment to chant or do something spiritual or come to temple or here. They're just, they're nice people seems like, but they're not interested. So degraded. And they will, in, in, in India and other places that where they would go to holy places, holy dams, or invite sadhus to their house so they can dump their sinful, whatever the reaction they're supposed to go through. So as a result, holy places and holy river, they were very afraid and they went to Lord Krishna that if they could go underneath the ground or disappear from the public face and when Kali Yuga is over, they will come back. So Lord Krishna heard it, but then he smiled. And Brahma Bhaibhartha Puran says that Jodi Papi Desha Chari, Jodi Papi Dharma Chari Jaya Dura Desha, Moro Senapati Bhakta, so Lord Krishna actually said this, this sloka that yes, this will happen, that people will be attracted to the West. Even in, I remember in my childhood, even though I am in a very remote village, my brother was in Vienna, he works for UNICEF. I am always thinking like, okay, I am in high school and I grew up very quick, you know, I, 14 years I graduated from high school and there is no college until you are 18, so I got stuck. And, but I kind of like grew up, we went to the West. West is everything. Forget about this Indian culture or anything. It was like a really degraded. Everything, everybody is looking for, it's not, what is West? It's a sense gratification. 
the, the, the opportunity, facility to gratify the senses in a better, higher uh, way, you know, more accessible to the senses, like that, some concept is there. Whether it's reality is there or not, that's different. But the false conception is very much invaded. I was talking to Bhakti Chara Maharaj, a lot of our Indian devotee, that uh, leading devotee, they all join actually in the West. Bhakti Charu Maharaj was in Germany, Subhag Maharaj was in England, the, the, the Bengali leaders, almost like they joined there. Joshumati Nandan Prabhu was an engineer in, here in East Coast, then he met Prabhupada went back. Gopal Krishna. Gopal Krishna Maharaj was in Canada, like that. They mostly like, they joined in the West and then went. But in Prabhupada's time, when I came in 77, I don't remember many Bengalis in Mayapur. Like almost you can count one, two, three, four, five, like something like that. Very few. And then of course now thousands and thousands, beautiful, because of Prabhupada mercy. Anyway, so Lord Krishna smiled and he told them, do not worry, you don't need to go disappear or fear of taking the loads, burden of the sinful uh, reaction of the people. <clears throat> I should, I will reveal to you uh, the most secret that there will be a great devotee, his title is Mantra Upasha. He will worship me through the holy name and he will go to the western world and he will bring back this revival chanting Hare Krishna to back to India where the India will be affected and then in the together, mutually together, it will purify the world. But it was not known. It was not known until recently that through the scriptures we find out, wow, Krishna already knew Prabhupada is coming. And he gave his name, his Mantra Pasha, that he will worship me through the holy name. He will establish the holy name's power all over. 1977, when Srila Prabhupada was sick, I was very affected by hearing this from Mr. Bhattacharya. Sampat Kumar Bhattacharya, he was the head priest in Bangalore temple. Those days, Prabhupada's time, the culture was in India that the head priest of a big temple like this would not go anywhere unless like a deadly emergency. He heard Prabhupada was sick, so he <coughs> took an airplane and came from Bangalore to Bombay. And see, Giriraj Maharaj was there and he's narrating this. And they didn't know even what was the discussion between Prabhupada and him because he asked for a private darshan. Uh, and then Prabhupada allowed, Giriraj Maharaj remembers it. And he found out, so we had a, a discussion with this uh, head priest. So he heard that Prabhupada was sick. Some way or other, he had this dream and he also wanted to come and see and help in any way he could to recover Prabhupada's health. When he came, he told to Prabhupada in a private that I went to Vrindavan and I saw your deity statue and I studied Vedanta, I studied different Puranas and I am expert in Pancharatri system. See in Ishkan we follow both Pancharatri and Bhagavad Bidhi, both, because that's how Prabhupada gave. Pancharatri is like a deity worship, you know, exactly rituals, everything is like that. But if somebody goes just distributing holy name or book distribution and chanting and following this four regulative without doing all this ritual, they can also go back home. There is nothing um, required. But Prabhupada is very merciful, he established both in Ishkan. So he said, I am a Pancharatri Vidhi expert. I know when a deity is there, for an example, you have a deity in Vrindavan, they made the deity, and the people are coming, I was watching it for a few days, 
All kinds of people are coming and they're praying, they're touching the deity. All the result of those people's reaction, bad reaction, goes to you when you are alive. That's why no Acharya established the deity form until they disappear. So, would you mind of telling your disciple not to do this deity worship, I mean, your statue worship? Because through the statue, it's all coming to you. It is not a fiberglass. It is a reality. Prabhupada was very sober and quiet. And he said, you have something more to say? He said, you know all the sickness is coming from those people to you. Prabhupada said, I know that. I have come for that. And the priest was kind of shocked because he thought, he was surprised that Prabhupada knew the whole thing about this Panchalati, what he was going to reveal. And Prabhupada chose to take people's suffering voluntarily when they come to temple and pray to him. In recent years, we don't see in the history any Acharya ever did that. <coughs> so Mr. Bhattacharya, he said, what can I say? I am only a priest. You choose to do this to take everybody's suffering. Then Prabhupada says, and it will continue for 10,000 years. I'll take their suffering so that they can chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, and go back home, back to Godhead. The Bhattacharya just cried, he could not say anything. He paid obeisances. Prabhupada said, Yes, that's why I am here and I'll be taking their any prayers, any reactions, otherwise they will not be able to chant. It's very painful how Prabhupada, but at the same time, without Prabhupada we don't have it. another personality who can actually give us the opportunity to go back home, back to God in this life. Of course, you all are senior to me and you know the importance of taking shelter of Prabhupada. But we should invite as many people possible to come and pray to Prabhupada. <coughs> Literally, I have my own experience in certain time in my life, 12 years back. I was very confused what exactly I should do. And I was very angry with Prabhupada. <laughs> in the car, I would go in the car, I would drive and I would yell to Prabhupada sometime and just scream out, why this is happening in my life, this is, what am I supposed to do? And in one sense, it is bad. I should not have done this and I apologize after two years. But in another sense, I'm glad that I went to him not a psychologist or somebody else. Because bhakti is the only thing can change the heart, uproots the karma of conditioned soul. No counseling, no other very rituals or other things works forever. May work temporarily few months, few days, few years, or one life, but it cannot uproot. Only bhakti, devotional service, is the only process to uproot. Bhagavatam emphasized. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he established this Krishna consciousness, 
He did it by his own example. In Jagannath Puri, devotee asked, why you are crying always for Krishna? And Mahaprabhu would say, I don't have love for Krishna. That's why I'm crying. In Damodar Lila, we see that, that Mother Joshuda was endeavoring so much to bind him. It is not the Krishna in a baby form. It is all pervasive simultaneously. Who can bind? Something is bigger than Brahman? No, there is nothing bigger than Brahman. Brihatvat means anything you can see biggest. Krishna is bigger than that. That biggest, bigger than biggest, simultaneously in this your beautiful body of Damodar. So nobody can bind. But her endeavor, devotional depth, the depth of her devotion, Bhatsullara's parental mood that she had, was so powerful, even though it had to endeavor, but at one point, she caught him, uh, she succeeded. What was that success that every Acharya gives? We can apply in our life that explanation, that our longing that Mahaprabhu exhibited. Oh Prabhupada, oh Krishna, please give me that. If you look at the songs that our Acharya wrote, those songs are always like they are praying, longing. They want to have this. They want to serve. They want to uh, go to that Vrindavan where they could serve. They are longing, longing. Even Narottam Das Thakur, who is an eternal associate, Lord Chaitanya himself said, he will come and do this. He is one of my associates. But Narottam Das Thakur always longing as if he never has. This is what Mahaprabhu exhibited. He's always crying. Sarup Damodaru would ask, why would you cry? Why are you crying so much? He said, I don't see Krishna. I never hear the flute. If I, would, if I had a love of God, I would see him. And Prabhupada made a very important point that Saragoswami is, they establish the deities, but they would always sing. He Radhe Braja Devi Ke Cholalite, He Nanda Sunakuto, where are you? Prabhupada made that. In a few lectures I heard Prabhupada said, the Goswamis are always searching, searching. They never say they met. They never say we know where Krishna is. Even though they establish the deities, this longing attracts Krishna's heart to bestow his blessing to us, to accept us. When we learn how to pray in this longing mood, Mother Joshuda was trying, she was praying to Narayana. I raised this boy with my breast milk. I have to discipline him so he can grow a beautiful young prince in Vrindavan. Oh Narayan, if I cannot discipline, who else? She was longing, she's praying. Krishna himself is the origin of Supreme, Narayan. Narayana only is Parshya. But that longing attracts Krishna. Krishna says, okay, you can find me. Even Radharani in spiritual world, she cries. When Krishna left for Vrindavan, she was crying. She cried that all the gopis has love. Why? Because in their dream they see Krishna. But the moment Krishna left, I'm so deprived of that love that I cannot even fall asleep. Which is true. Rather, he never went to sleep for 113 and a half years. 113 and a half years. Always crying for Krishna. This longing is the foundation of attracting Krishna's mercy in this mind. We may think like, well, we need to learn the philosophy. Maybe we need to um, go deep.
depart into our understanding. That's all good. But even if you don't have, na khalet na patet, there is no loss. There is never diminish. Every endeavor we are doing in every Ishkan temple. Even a little lamb. It's good we offer lamb with the devotees because the mood the other devotee has can affect our, I may not have, feeling for the Lord. But the, with the devotee, when they are offering, with their mercy, when I offer, I can have their mood also with me. It's a win-win situation. How Prabhupada made this association of beautiful devotees in every center. We should take advantage. What was that Brahmana disciple who was reading the Bhagavad Gita in South India? Did he know how to read? No. no. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw all the scholars who learned it. They are laughing at him because they know how to read. They can read Sanskrit, they can memorize it. But this disciple, he was just following his guru to read Bhagavad Gita. He didn't even know which way it sat. But when Mahaprabhu says, but I see you crying. He said, I see. As soon as I opened the page, the absolute truth, who is beyond imagination, beyond approachable, supreme, is eternally, preeminently lovable. He loves his devotee. Such a supreme position comes down to be a charioteer. I cannot believe Lord is so affectionate. His love is beyond. So I cry. Mahaprabhu says, you have, you have understood Bhagavad Gita, the essence. Even though he could not read. Externally. But internally he understood the essence. All the rituals, like somebody's parents, Shraddha today, you can go to any temple, I don't mean to criticize the other religion or other things. They may do all these rituals. The big dif difference between Krishna consciousness, what Prabhupada and Mahaprabhu came to give, versus any other process. King Riga, in Krishna book you can read, in Bhagavatam. King Rigo was so generous, so intelligent, he knew how to do the rituals. So he used to give charity to the Brahmanas, 10,000, 50,000, 40,000, making all the Brahmanas happy. Life goal to make the devotee or Brahmana happy. That's true. But it was not Krishna conscious. One little mistake, one little mistake, one cow from one person's group that he donated mixed with other cows that he did not donate yet. So by mis it was not even intention, nothing. Mistake, he just do gave again same cow mixed with the other 10,000 or 9,999. He came, apologized to those Brahmanas, I'll give you more 10,000, please forgive me. They said, no, we don't take Can you imagine such a ritual, such a big heart, you're doing so much religious activity, one little mistake, you become lizard. Is that what spirituality is supposed to be? It is a function of the heart. It is not the function of the head or intelligence. But bhakti, there is nothing diminished, nothing lost. Whether you know proper pronunciation or you don't know proper pronunciation, Lord Krishna himself agreed to this. Murkha vadati vishnaya sadhava vadati vishnave ubayasto saman punnam bhavagrahi janadha. Those are fools, they may not say proper pronunciation, so they say Vishnaya. 
And those who are scholar pandit, they know the Sanskrit. You know, I ask myself sometimes, am I pandit or fool or what? So I, I don't want to be either one, I just want to be follower or follower or follower, that's all. It's <laughs> just simple. Servant of the servant is the safest. So Lord Krishna says that pandits, they say Vishnave and the fool say Vishnaya. But either one, if they both have a devotion, I only take the devotion. I don't care whether they pronounce properly or not properly. This is what falls down. When we come to offer a little lamp or dancing or singing, Krishna looks at our intention. Bhaktir padhart prabhu kari kari khai abhaktir ulte nahi chai. If somebody has no devotion, he may offer me big, big items. I do not have any intention to look at it. And you know all the pastimes of Vidura, so I Durjodhan was surprised. Was it purposely, intentionally Krishna did or not? I don't know. The Shastra doesn't say that. But Durjodhan made a 56 prayer in India, Vedic culture, 56, they call Chapana Bhog, supposed to be the royal person's delights, you know, or lunch. The best lunch is 56 preps. Even Sarvamabhattacharya, he made it for Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya gave a good logic. I am a sannyasi, I cannot do it. Prabhupada narrated very interesting that Sarva Bhattacharya told Mahaprabhu, you are eating 56 prayers in Jagannath Mandir every few minutes and you are giving a big logic that you are sannyasi. Mahaprabhu is quiet, so he ate everything. <laughs> Prabhupada said, this is called devotion. Krishna wants to be our intimate friend, more than your husband, more than your wife, more than your children, more than anything. We all can benefit our family the best when we become a good devotee. Because they will get affected. That's the best thing individually we can do. Srila Prabhupada, many famous quote in our training session, uh, we have a, like a hundred, eight quote of Prabhupada that we have to memorize all yeah. the candidates. It's necessary. Like Prabhupada says, Krishna Consciousness, International Society for Krishna Consciousness, its purpose is to train each individual to be independently thoughtful and competent in all actions without bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada wants each of us to have that capability to reciprocate, to love Krishna on our own with the association of the devotees. But it is, it is individual. Mm -hmm. We cannot become judgmental or sentimental. We should be always transcendental because that's the soul is. Soul is essentially spiritual and transcendental. Soul is never contaminated. It is the conduct of the material nature makes the soul to go through this. But essentially, not uh, just potentially, we are essentially spiritual. We have nothing to do in our construction any trace of maya or three modes. But some or other misuse of free will, we are here. Or at least I am here. <laughs> so the purpose is how to embrace this Krishna consciousness as appreciable or the best thing uh, to progress according to Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur Madhuja Kadambini, if we can be grateful every day to our spiritual master Prabhupada and Krishna, every day if we can be grateful, our progress is very quick. So with this note, I'm just requesting you and also begging your mercy that keep on going whatever you're doing and try to engage more devotee from the conditioned world 
and that's all. Do not feel ever discouraged because every endeavor is magnifying in spiritual calculation. At the moment of death, when, when Tamal Gesha Maharaj, out of, we can say, out of his seeing our condition, he told Prabhupada, well, can't we make three lives instead of one life to go back home, back to Godhead? This is in Vrindavan. And then Prabhupada went in chanting to the other side and he came back. He said, no, just this life. Try your best. If you are lacking anything, I pray, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will fulfill. You do not need another life. Try your best, only one life. That's all. You'll go back home, back to God. We may be short or lack of lacking of so many things. But according to Prabhupada's mercy, he said he prayed to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he will fulfill if we are lacking anything. So with that note, we should be very happy and thankful that we are in contact with Srila Prabhupada and his sincere followers with you all. Are. Is there any uh, comment, correction? Reflection, yes, Prabhu. So this one life has to have some sincerity in it. Sincerity means, yes, sincerity means you do your best. Mm -hmm. Sincerity, because if you look at it, in Keshavji Gauriyamat, Srila Prabhupada and Sridhar Maharaj, they were taking lunch one day. This is before he came. And few Visitor came to see the deity and Prabhupada told to Srila Siddha Maharaj, Maharaj, we are taking prasadam. This visitor, they came to have darshan of the deity and they gone. They saw two old men is eating, but they did not see one thing, the Lord Chaitanya's future mission in, in the hand of one of us. Only thing we have to become is sincere and serious, that's all. Of course, I don't know what Srila Siddhar Maharaj understood. But Prabhupada knew that the mission was in his hand. So then, later on when he says this, sincere and serious boils down to do, we do our best, that's all. The rest, Prabhupada will help us. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's what I understand. Is that okay? Yes. Very Thank, well. you. Thank you. Thank you. Question? Yes, Mother. Krishna, something you said earlier about, uh, could you please explain to me this? You said uh, Acharya never saw, installed deities during his lifetime, but, but they. Not, the, not the Radha Krishna deity, their own deity. Murti. Murti. Their Murti. Oh. But they, they made Prabhupada's murti before Prabhupada left oh. in Vrindavan. Yeah. And Pancharatvik system is like that. Sorry, I could not uh, probably I just yeah, yeah, I didn't explain it properly. Any other? Yes, Mother. Prabhu, um, you know, we know there is Nitya Siddha and Sadhana Siddha and Kripa Siddha. Mm -hmm. and, um, not so long ago, a friend of mine said, he heard that Prabhupada said, we are all Kripa Siddhas. And I had never heard it put just like that, but it makes so much sense because, you know, we can do our best, but it, more than likely it's not good enough. So that mercy of Srila Prabhupada is what will take us back. So had you ever heard that quote? I had never heard that. Mother Ananga Manjali on, in her offering in Alachwa, she was mentioning, she said, I guess I am Kripa Siddha. That's what she said. Yeah, because I am not so good in my sadhana every day. So then later on, I just asked them, is that Prabhupada's quote somewhere or just your own? I said, just mine. Okay. But one thing, what I understood, that uh, very nice conversation with Tamal Krishna Maharaj about that, that 
like a Damodar Lila two finger short. One is endeavor, another is mercy. mercy. But question is when mercy comes. <laughs> we are endeavoring, we are doing sadhana. When mercy comes, when our longing prayers is there, mercy is there. So it is Kripa Siddha, also Sadhan Siddha. Kripa Siddha doesn't mean we don't do anything. Like Prabhupada was walking and same Tamagisha Maharaj asked, what do you mean Kripa Siddha? So like then Prabhupada said, well, just like you don't want to hear now, but I'm forcing you to hear. Something like that. Is that what I understood? Thank you. Any other reflection or discussion? No? Thank you. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Panchadu, Bhattu, Vishnu, Vasudeva, Chivaji, Hare Hare.